Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Awal Al-Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdika rajisu da'ifu miskinu zalim al jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence Allahu al hayy al hayyu ya qayyum 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 Alhamdulillah that Allah <coughs> guided us to this immense way of Divine Love and its way is so real that people don't believe how real it is because it's astonishing for the mind to even contemplate. That in Hadith al-Qudsi Allah describes Prophet and that is an inheritable trait and attributes that my servant when they've done all of their obligations and they've continuously do their obligations, they're approaching me through voluntary worship. And Allah finds acceptance in their voluntary worship means the things that they do for love and muhabbat. And as a result of Allah's acceptance, Allah begins to describe, I become the hearing in which they hear, not the ears because Allah grants to them an eternal attribute that Allah grant for them, a sami al-basir that they are the servants whom Allah grants His attributes and essences upon them, that they become the, I become the hearing in which they hear and this hadith of Qudsi, I become the seeing in which they see, I become the speaking in which they speak, I become the hands in which they touch. I become the feet in which they move and what they want and what they desire means they become Rabbaniyoon and they have power of kun fayakun because Allah is encompassing their attributes and their heart and what they want Allah wants. What Allah wants, they want. As a result, Allah begins to describe they are Rabbaniyoon, very lordly souls. And they have power of kun fayakun, means they merely put their heart and things begin to happen. But people don't understand because too much and too astonishing for, for people of dunya to understand this reality. And the turuqs and tariqahs and spiritual path, it's only that because the blind can't lead the blind. So many may claim guidance but those whom Allah has given hidayat and guidance and given them an authority to guide that they have an ijazah from Allah from Sayyidina Muhammad and manifest through their shaykhs that we have given to you an ijazah to guide. The least in this understanding of that guidance they are walking version of that hadith, must be, must be. Otherwise what would be the purpose of the ijazah? The ijazah is for the physical world to understand and manifest that these are one of those servants whom Allah hears through His hearing and He granted a hearing that is eternal, that goes beyond this dunya into malakut for all of eternity. And that their ears, and this we've described many times that the shaykhs are like a mobile phone just for us to understand. Maybe 50 years ago was difficult to understand but to think now that there could be a phone linked to anywhere in the world and if you leave that phone on the desk it could be like a hot mic. The phone could be on, the camera is on and whatever you say and do 
in the presence of that phone it's somebody's on the other receiving side watching. That's the system of submission. Allah, otherwise why Allah wants the servant to submit? Submit your will back to me so that I will be your seeing, so that you look where I want you to look and when you look I see through your eyes. Now we bring it down because that's too high for people because that's inherited from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that wherever you look I look through your eyes, whatever you hear through your ears I hear through your ears. And what you speak of my realities, I speak through your tongue. And what you touch through your hands means your power, your qudra, your connection, it's my hands that give you that power. And where you step with your feet, your path means every step that you're moving of those servants, Prophet inspiring with them, my foot on your foot that the, the path of haqq and truth upon your feet. So you're inheriting from Qadam as siddiq the truthful servants and then you are muqaddam, you are the servants of the path. And all of this and you have now power of Rabbaniyoon and what you put into your heart becomes kun fayakun, it begins to manifest. So it means that these are mobile phones for the Divine the Presence. For the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and the presence of their awliya, the ones whom are governing them and sending these lights and isharats and guidance and fires, emanations into their heart. It's their eyes that see the audience that's important, not the shaykh's eyes but the faculty of his seeing and his spiritual seeing through his soul, they're all privy to that connection. At any time anyone within the heavens of that reality is looking through their eyes, through their spiritual eyes of their soul, is hearing through their spiritual hearing. They hear and see everything, people don't understand that. These microphones and mobile phones they never turn off, there's never a time in which Prophet is not hearing through their ears, wish they to turn off, not turn off. Like they're finding now with Apple phones, it never goes off. Even when you think you powered off, it's still locating you. It has an inner battery that's operating while they're showing all these things in these technologies. Because the material world they want to track your every movement. That movement is power, that knowledge is power, your buying habits, movement habits, shopping habits, what you eat, what your sickness is, what's your medicine, what's your rizq, what do you buy, what do you sell, everything about you is a commodity. But for the heavens Allah is showing, if they're doing this for this material world that is not the weight of a mosquito for Allah Allah say, you're more precious to me. There's not a movement that you do that I don't hear it, I don't see it, we don't witness it. And it's your responsibility to come to the turuqs to understand it. And when you understand it, you govern yourself accordingly. They hear, not the shaykh, he doesn't need to hear anything. But the faculty of his hearing through his soul, they hear through him. His spiritual firasan, they see through him. And when they find it necessary, they speak through him. When they want his hands to be active and to be connected, they feel through him, they touch and they put Yadullah upon them and their qadam and their path, wherever it goes, becomes blessed by them. So it means that this is a huge reality. And in such a material world where as we become more and more material and more and more towards the end, that understanding is completely lost. And that's why we said in the last days awliya will be hidden. 
And many times people have asked, well, they're all going to be lifted from the earth. He said, no, the bad character of people won't see them anymore, won't hear them, nah, don't hear what he says, won't see him, I don't see you as anything. As a result, they become blinded by that reality. But doesn't mean that they don't walk the earth, they walk the earth, their microphone for the heavens. Their camera for the heavens, what people say and do, they're witnessing and ever present by their personalities and by their presence amongst the people. That's their blessing and their curse. For if you should act improperly in that presence and in those associations, it's witness. Why is a sin in, in Mecca, why is it called haramain? But they say, if you do a sin in Mecca, it's multiplied by one million times. Why is that? If you do a sin at home, it's ten. But if you do the sin in Mecca, it's a million. So it's called haramain, no haram here. Because it's a warning that in this holy precincts there are many souls. There is a Divinely Presence. If you plan on doing that in this precinct, the retribution and difficulty is severe. So then people of faith, they govern themselves accordingly. And that's why Allah is teaching, don't make hajj until you're in good character and good manners. Imagine the person want to go for hajj. And do every type of forbidden and pickpocket and touch people and be inappropriate. Everything is now a million times on their sayat. And all this warning is don't do your hajj at that time. Means go for this reality when you are present and ready. When you have purified and cleansed yourself and you know that what you're going to go and get into, when you know that what you're about to enter into. Then definitely your aqal and mind should tell you, this is not the place to sin but this is the place to receive immense blessings. And we said that the Kaaba is a, is a house of stone. What about the house in which Allah built with the heart of these awliya? That Allah said, I built them, I blew into them of my nafas and my breath. And that they are the living representation of that reality, wherever they walk they are a Kaaba and a Qibla. Means people will find their deen around them, they circumambulate around them, means they keep the presence because circumambulation we described in other talks is not a worshipness but it's for you when you circumambulate is to keep your mind on Allah and keep saying, Allah bayk, Allahumma ya Rabbi, I'm coming, I'm imitating walking in your presence to remember my life is to submit. And when people come to the shaykhs and watch the videos, it's like their being is circumambulating around that reality that you remind me of the truth, you remind me of Allah, you remind me definitely of the love and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and I keep you in my life, I watch the videos, read the articles and that's the reality. And that the Qibla means I find my focus towards Allah because when you bow down to Kaaba you shouldn't be worshipping the Kaaba. Kaaba is merely a direction in which to direct yourself to the oneness of Allah the shaykh is more of that reality because he's built by Allah The Kaaba is built by man's hands and stones. But it was symbolic that this is a symbolic representation of the house of Allah and Allah says, more holy is the one where I'm not on heaven and I'm not on earth. That, that includes then the Kaaba, but I am in the heart of my believer. Means that believer who encompasses that hadith al-Qudsi, Allah describing, I'm the hearing, I am the breathing, I'm the breath, I'm the speaking and I'm the hands and the feet. And as a result it's a Kaaba, my light encompasses that servant's heart. 
And if you circumambulate your life around that reality and find your deen and your purpose in their presence, they lead you to the reality of the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad whom is the one who's really hearing through them, who's really seeing through them and who's speaking to them because he doesn't want to leave his nation alone and he doesn't want to leave his nation without guidance. And at any time there are 124,000 awliyaullah upon this earth that are hearing their command, that are seeing the command and they are speaking the command and each into their darajat and their purpose. This is like a triangle, from one level they have a certain responsibility as their level is higher then their mission is of a different reality. And when they have permission to speak means they're inheriting from the holy tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad and they are warith al-Muhammadiyyah, warith al-Muhammadiyyah they are the, the guides of the Muhammadan haqqaiq which are of the highest level of awliyaullah. But a problem is that their humility may fool people but it doesn't fool Allah and it doesn't fool Sayyidina Muhammad So means the schools of tariqah are a school of adab, they govern ourselves with the best of manner and the best of character. For Allah doesn't take kindly when you come against them, speak harshly against them, act improperly against them. Because as if you are coming against Allah and His Rasul Sayyidina Muhammad that is the blessing and the danger. The blessing is if we know it, we use it to the immensity of its blessings. That we act good in front of the camera, we be of service to that camera, we're doing everything to get the nazar of that camera. For if it should direct its eyes and the eyes of its soul upon another soul, then what happens? You have the nazar of Allah you have the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad the one whom is controlling that hadith. When Allah is saying, I am the seeing, if you took the nazar of that shaykh who's like a camera for us, Allah is clarifying, I am the seeing, I'm seeing you. Out of the whole of my creation you came to one of my very specific cameras to do your good deeds and you are ever witnessed beyond just general witnessing. And then you are witnessed by the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because how many of these he has? 124,000? Then how many of each of different responsibilities? Imagine like a security room where there's all these cameras. Now we understand it more in dunya. You can go into parts of the government and there's rooms in which they have thousands of cameras. Then they have another layer with very specific cameras in specific locations. Those are very important locations for very specific cameras. These are again like the eyes of the awliya. These specific awliya, their eyes on different types of cameras for Prophet in which he's very attentive at looking at what they see so that that dress and that perfection reaches to the servant. In these last days and days of immense difficulty we are all asking to be under the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and that we reach the fires and the lights of Sayyidina Mahdi that, that that camera be switched to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi sahab al-Waqt and as he's looking and looking through that camera, he's looking at the good characteristics, praying for their good actions and their good actions to be increased, praying for their bad character to be decreased. That nazar alone and the fires of that reality is a najat and a safety for people. Imagine that light and the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi Sahib al waqt is moving out and dressing the souls of people. And when he sees the good character, he's pleased and making hamd 
and making salawats and praisings upon Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and immense beauty and light and tajallis dress the soul. And when he's not pleased having to make istighfar and hoping and praying that they be clean and purified for the difficulties that are coming, means the time is, is such a critical and important time and it's such a critical time to have good character and to come into the reality of tariqah, that this tariqah is very live like a live wire, that everything being said is heard. Every action is being seen, every word spoken is heard. As a result these fires, these lights are dressing those whom can make their faith to be real when they believe it and they govern themselves with that belief they should be very successful and they should be very safe with the tajallis and the lights and the blessings that Allah sending upon this earth for us to be safe through many, many calamities and many difficulties that open upon the earth. This path is a path of humility. When we're given a chance to serve, teach our families to serve. Teach our, 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 our children and our families, be humble, go to the masjid and clean, go to the masjid and serve. Do these things or find an opportunity to be under their nazar and don't take the ticket of somebody else. Don't say, my husband does this, I don't have to do anything. No, because your grave is separate. Your grave is one person and you can't piggyback somebody into another person's grave, right? Means each one has to stand with their aman. The tariqah is a, is a place in which to get the reward of a nazar. So then what are we doing to get that reward? Then the people come to be of service. We teach our family and our children, serve, go to the masjid and serve, go to the masjid and clean, go onto the streets to give the food, be of service, do these good deeds, good character. Why? Why are they doing that on dunya? Right? They're going to have now what they call a, a social report card. When you walk down the street and the camera zooms in on your face. So then all these nefarious kids they want to wear hats and, and hoodies and begin to cover their face. Aren't these the signs of what we're talking about? In the physical world you see that. That you walk down the straight streets in the UK which is the most camera oriented country other than probably China and they're looking at every action and every expression that you have. And people are getting angry, why this is, a, this is against my privacy. So why do you think you have privacy? Allah's looking. This is a sign of Allah's kingdom is coming. If you're bothered by this camera, imagine Allah's cameras that they're witnessing. Allah witnesses, you come, you sit, you do nothing. You don't clean, you just eat, you don't service, you don't participate, for what? Then when are you going to give that opportunity to be of service? At home? So it means our life is to find that camera, live a life of service, try our best to do something so that that camera zooms in on us, Zzzz comes in and they're watching, oh mashaAllah look that one went out there, this one bought these muffins there, this one is going under the bridge, be careful that you don't get stabbed by the crazy homeless people where they're really out of their mind and hiding. But Allah said, before you leave and, and set out on those you say, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal waqeel, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyun azeem and you give your food and Prophet is watching. So it means this is the opportunity in our life to do the good deeds. To live a life of service, this service that we do, this cleaning and, and these acts of love that we do are what save us. When you're given an opportunity to buy something, don't think like a businessman. Don't think that this two dollars I saved here versus the two dollars more I paid there that you went away saving anything. The two dollars more you would have bought from the tariqah may have taken many sicknesses and difficulty away from you. 
and as a result may have been a shifa and a healing for you. These are the world of faith, you don't know from what you've been praying, what Allah put in that item that you were going to get from your tariqah, not from Costco. Allah doesn't put your secret in Costco when you don't choose to go to your tariqah. Means these are acts of faith, the people outside show more faith than the people inside. They're dying to get a taweez from that center, why? Because they want something from that belief. They don't think that they're going to go get it for a dollar cheaper from another shaykh. They want it from that shaykh, they want it from that rizq, they want it from that tajalli, they want it from that center because that's a sign of faith. And Allah reward the dollar more that they paid, two dollars more that they paid by taking away many different difficulties. The food of awliyaullah it extends your rizq, it expands your rizq. The same person who comes to be cheap and save is the same one who's sick and not wondering, why should sick? Make dua for me, I'm sick. Why you're sick? Why you're not eating from the center? Why are you not eating from the food from the center? But the food from Costco is the one making you sick. So it means this is a… this faith is real. Allah put all of these as our remedy. Everything that people are giving and supporting and doing taking away many difficulties. And this is not from me, I don't take anyone's difficulty away. I provide the opportunity and Allah is the one whom gives and takes. Because Allah is the only one who gives faith. Say, MashaAllah they have faith in you, means they have faith in this teaching, they have the faith and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and look they went and there was an exchange like we said in the contract, they took it, they gave their, their exchange, their compensation. As a result Allah takes their difficulty, Allah takes away the sickness, Allah expands their rizq and their sustenance. And the shaykh knows that because he lived his whole life in that system. And we pray in the last days that people's faith doesn't keep dissipating so much until they look around and there's nothing left of their belief. This is a way in which to keep our faith real, our faith to be active, our life to be of service, our life to, to have the camera from the heavens to look upon us. Not worried about the camera on earth, we don't care if that camera sees us or not, we want Allah's camera to be looking at us. That it keeps zooming in because it's happy, goes and comes in and looks and says, MashaAllah look this one's this one, this one, this one is consistently doing the good deeds that they can. And this is always a reminder for myself and that's why wherever we are we try to broadcast and to appear and to do the work and, and all the things that we have, we have sworn our allegiance to, to serve. We pray that Allah give us all a himmah and a zeal in which to to be under the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and don't use our cleverness. Your mind is your most dangerous weapon, the shaitan enters into your mind to destroy you and destroy the family. We pray that Allah expand our heart and the power of our faith, a faith in which can move mountains if it believes. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بحرمة محمد المصطفى وبسير سورة الفاتحة